Do you struggle making presentation with graphs that people actually understand? If so, this video is for you. Today, we're going to go through a few things on graph. First, we're going to go over the secondary axis, which is the combo charts. We're going to go over why you should not use pie charts. We'll go through waterfall charts. We'll go through basic tips on the bar charts. And also, I'll talk to you about why less is more when you're making graphs the secondary axis or known as the combo chart. So at the top here, you see that I have two axes, the left axis with the revenues, as well as my growth in your revenues, which is the green bar. Uh, it helps you put more information on a single graph and maybe do some, some quick analysis with your audience. Before I knew about secondary axis, I was using two charts to, uh, to illustrate my points. So as you can see here, the revenue evolution with the purple pie, uh, bar chart and uh, a line on another graph. But I sometimes I put them on two different slides and it was just not working well. So I'm gonna show you how I made this graph at the top. It's actually pretty simple, but if you don't know, you don't know. So you just select your data here and you can click insert and you click on chart and then you can click on this chart and then you go to the chart design, change the chart type, click on combo, and then click on the secondary axis right here to your right. And then you click as a line and then boom, your growth revenue is right here showing as the orange line to my left graph here. Second tip I want to give you here is to not use pie charts. I see a lot of people using pie charts and I don't think you should use them because you will understand it with the few following minutes here. So to the left here, I have a pie chart with the cars sold during the year of FY20. As you can see, we cannot really determine if the red car are, have sold more or is it the blue that have sold more. When you look at the right in the bar, in the bar chart, you can obviously see that the blue cars have sold more than the red cars. So that's why you should not use the pie charts. Some people will say that pie charts can be useful if you want to dig down or like, let's say here we have a blue car distribution by brand here and I sold 25 Toyota and 25 Volkswagen. But to those people, I say no, I will say the stack bar chart is even better because as you can see here i have the blue the red the gray toyota volkswagen honda uh, that are on the graph here the bar chart and you can already tell that volkswagen have sold less for the red cars which is the second column and in percentage as well so it's a stacked 100% chart and you can see to the right we can see that my gray cars Volkswagen in term of percentage are bigger than the red so we sold in percentage more gray Volkswagen than red Volkswagen this graph is one of my favorite and I at the same time, it's one of the worst, but it can be really useful. Like it's very visual. So it's pretty simple here. I select my data, I go insert, and then I click on here, which is the waterfall chart. And then boom, let's make it a little bit bigger. I click on the very right, double click, set as total, uh, and then format data point. I love to remove the connector and set my gap to zero. So they look like this. I remove my legend and normally what I like to do is put my totals as the same color. Whatever goes up, I like to put it in green and whatever goes down, I like to put it in red so it's more visual. And then I change my background colors to make it a little bit cuter like this. And boom, you have a graph that shows the profit evolution. So you have my beginning of the year revenues, my Toyota sales, my under sales, then the guarantee claims that, that gave us less dollars and then the cost and then I have my end of year profit. If this video helped you so far, make sure to smash the like button so it spreads to more people. And oh my God, thanks God. This is not an art channel because I did this myself. My art skills are pretty good. Thanks God I didn't do my hat myself, right? This one can seem pretty simple, but it can be also really frustrating. It's just to put totals on your bar charts. So if you go here and you click insert and you click on this, 
it was going to show you something like that right which is really weird so what we want is again use the combo chart to put the totals for my sales so i have my toyota sales my honda sales and i change the chart type i go to combo and put my total as a secondary axis as a line and i put those as stacked column so my toyota sales and my under sales as stacked column and they're going to be on the left axis while my total is going to be on the right axis real quick what it gives you is a line like this again make sure your right axis has the same values as the left axis else it won't show up at the right place and then you right click the gray bar you click add data label right click your data labels format data labels put them above you can even put them in bold Control b and then make them a little bit bigger then you probably telling yourself oh my god this graph looks horrible yes it does so we're gonna click on the gray line go to format shape outline and click no outline so the bar disappeared you can delete the legend here boom you can even do this and boom you have a really cool looking graph and then you can do format data series i like to put my gap width at 75 percent so they look a little bit fatter it's easier for the eye something else about graph that is really important to keep in mind is you should tell yourself that less is more when you have a graph that is too crowded there's too much stuff on it it's really tough your audience shall understand the graph in less than three seconds. They shall understand what's going on. So let's see the example here to the left. I have six products and it's really, I call it the spaghetti graph. It's really messy. Again, I prefer the bar chart on my side, uh, but it can work as a line bar. To your right here, they regrouped the three products that, are, that have similarities. So you should try to regroup similarities. So another example I have is when I was doing cash flow graphs. Uh, I was I had really messy data sometimes so let's let's do it together I have data here which is cash collection cash at the end gross burn and net burn and if I select my data quick shortcut control Q and then I click on charts and then I click let's say on this one right oh it doesn't show really well right I have a lot of data something I can see straight up is like I have a really big uh, point in my data which is the cash at end the orange bar 30,000 while all my other values at like 100 200 so it's it's not easy to see anything what's going on here so what I'll start to do is actually remove the cash at end because we probably don't want to see it on this specific graph right maybe in this specific case it's too crowded versus the previous examples I gave you so maybe it's too crowded and we want to put less stuff on the graph so I remove the cash at end here and boom, it looks like this. Again, I don't really like it, right? I have my cash collection in blue, I have my net burn in yellow, and I have my gross burn in uh, gray. So I'll start by putting my axis at the really bottom. I go to labels and I go to low. Uh, again, it looks cuter like that. My month now appear at the very bottom. And then I probably want to do a combo chart again. So change that chart type. And then my cash collection, I can keep it as a column. I put the secondary axis with the gross burn and the net burn, and I put them as a line. So here it's a bit messy again, because my, uh, my axis are not the same values, right? So this can be really misleading if I keep the same axis value to the left and to the right, because it doesn't show a real data, right? It shows maybe that my burn is positive, but right now it's negative. So it's not really nice. So what I want you to do is do like change those value format axis, and then it's going to give you graph two here. So now you have a cash collection in blue that you can see specifically by month, how much you cash collected and the net burn in yellow. And you can also see the difference with your gross burn. Again, if this video helped you, make sure you smash the like button. And if you want to learn more about basics in Excel, then you should click on this video right here and you will learn more right here. Smash the like button, guys. Smash the like button.